Hey guys, it's Natalie, and today we're thrifting for New York Fashion Week street style inspired looks at the Goodwill outlet where you pay by the pound. I don't know about you, but my social media feed has been full of New York Fashion Week content and nothing about what's on the runways. Everything is about what people are wearing to and from these events. So I did a deep dive into New York Fashion Week street style beyond my For You page, and here is my trend report. Number one, there is a continuation of quiet luxury, but with a few small tweaks, one being that the button downs are worn differently. So cropped button downs, or button downs with only one button buttoned. There's also more of an emphasis on warm tones rather than contrasting white and black, although those are still very prominent. Pleated skirts, I feel like those also fall under the quiet luxury category, but those are very, very popular. Now into the other trends. Relaxed fit and low rise bottoms. We're not getting back to skinny jeans anytime soon. There's still so much of an emphasis of 90s and Y2K fashion. Sheer and metallic. I did group these together only because we're going thrifting for these looks. And I feel like sheer and metallic pieces are very fragile and I tend to find them damaged at thrift stores. But maybe we will be lucky and find them I'm manifesting it. Loud floral prints. I feel like it's very common to see loud florals in spring and summer fashion, but in fall transitional fashion, it's a little bit interesting and I'm here for it because I love a good print. Then the big colors were red and orange. I was definitely expecting red because it's been talked about for like a whole year, but orange was kind of a bit of a surprise. And I actually just recently thrifted a little orange mini bag. So I'm really excited to incorporate that into hopefully some of the styles we find today. And I'd love to find a similar accessory in red because I feel like red and orange colors tend to wear me if I wear a whole ensemble rather than me wearing them. So I like to have these pieces as pops of color. Now, shoes. There were a lot of knee-high boots. I did not see any ankle booties. And then there were a lot of socks worn with shoes, but the big shoe trends other than knee-high boots were Mary Jane's ballet flats and sneakers. So I feel really excited to go thrifting for these trends. Those are just the big takeaways. There were so many others. I spent so long <laughs> looking at inspiration and I feel so ready to go thrifting for this. So let's just get to it and start digging. The bins were a lot more crowded than I was expecting for a late weekend afternoon. My strategy when it's crowded like this is to find the bins where people are throwing back the items that they don't want. This putback bin had some of the styles that we were looking for with lots of button ups. Then this pair of cargo capris. They looked like my size, so I tried them on over my biker shorts and they fit really well. Plus they were low rise, which is very on trend for the New York Fashion Week street style kind of look. So I definitely snagged them. This red dress definitely caught my eye as red is so big this season. It was my size, but it wasn't really my style and it felt a little too Christmassy. It would be really cute with tights for the holidays, but I am sticking with fall right now. This was a sheer piece. It was new with tags Fashion Nova or something, and it was super confusing. It seemed like the sleeves were sewn together. I don't know, but something wasn't right with it, so I left it behind. Another sheer piece, and the sleeves are not sewn together on this one. The velvet, sheer, and bright colors are definitely giving New York Fashion Week street style. I even saw someone wearing a really similar top. This piece immediately went to my for sure pile. A Dries Von Newton dress, or however you say it, these retail for like $1,500. I was freaking out when I found it. The fabric and quality felt so nice. It was a wool blend. Then I started seeing moth holes. I was wondering why someone would leave it behind, but I had to do the same and I was so sad because this would have been so cute for the quiet luxury kind of look. 
This find made up for the moth hole tragedy. It is a gorgeous emerald green BHL DN dress. It's not my size, but I did get it to list on Poshmark. I found this vintage tan waistcoat. It is something I had been looking for since the quiet luxury video and it fits. Plus how New York Fashion Week street style is this piece. The perfect pop of red piece, this belt. I love the silver hoop and fringe. I have some ideas for styling this with a black dress and I found this 90s, early 2000s black maxi dress. I love the velvet details, but I already have a black maxi at home and I feel like it'll go better with the belt So I ended up leaving this piece behind these platform sketchers are too good Unfortunately, they are not my size, but I couldn't leave them. So I will be listing them I thought these black leather knee-high boots were so on trend for New York Fashion Week But again, not my size and I really couldn't win with the shoes today. Look at these metallic kitten heels I did win with this orange halter top find the sequin trim on this piece is amazing and it's Gunnay Sachs Jessica McClintock which I've never found before. I figured this was a part of a set, but I didn't find the skirt until right before close. This tan linen blazer is such high quality. It's men's J. Crew and Irish linen, which I had never heard of until I found this piece, but I looked it up and Irish linen is apparently the highest quality of linen. I tried this piece on myself and I like it. It's oversized, but I don't see myself wearing it, although it is very New York Fashion Week, but I did get this to see if it fits my boyfriend. I found some gorgeous vintage plus size pieces, which I know are hard to come by at the thrift store and even more so at the bin. So I had to show them off like this blazer, wool skirt, and slip dress. Are you kidding me? I bundled them all up together for someone to hopefully find because they all seem to be the same size and oh, they're just gems. This leather tote caught my eye. I know it looks a little scratched up, but the great thing about leather is it usually can be brought back to life with a leather bomb. It ended up being the brand Portland leather goods, which I've totally eyed online. I thought this wooden straw bag was cute in a funky kind of way, but I really didn't see myself styling it, so I did leave that one behind. A black pleated mini skirt. This has been on my thrift wish list for so long, I thought I would never find one. It's also vintage fits and isn't too short. I am so excited to style this. An Urban Outfitters army green mini skirt with a bit of an asymmetrical hem and an interesting fold down waist. I really like the way that this fits and I think we can style it in a New York Fashion Week street style kind of way, so I got it. A floral romper. I have no idea where this is from, if it's vintage or modern, but it looks like it should fit. And this is the sort of bold floral print that feels very on theme for what we're looking for. So I got it. I hit the leather jacket jackpot. Let's go through these three finds. First off, this brown jacket is a mix of Western and motorcycle style leather jackets. Then this classic black zip front by Wilson's. And finally, this black belted waist trench. I feel like this one is especially on trend with what I saw in the street style looks. Now for some honorable mentions of items I ended up putting back. These vintage jeans, they were just not the best fit. Plus I already have vintage high rise jeans in my closet. I absolutely would have caved if the fit was perfect. This vintage paisley button up, I love this print, but unfortunately the sleeves were way too short like it had been shrunk in the wash by the previous owner. These long sleeves were giving Y2K vibes, but again, the fit just wasn't quite right for me. This vintage puffer jacket, I love the color on this piece. However, I rarely ever wear a true winter jacket, so it doesn't make much sense for me to have more than one and they take up so much room. I ended up getting just about 19 pounds and thrifting until close. Well, I definitely was not expecting to thrift quite as late as we did, but we found some serious gems and I actually was able to include everything we picked up in the thrift with me portion so we can get right to styling these babies in a New York Fashion Week street style kind of way. The green mini skirt. I have been wanting a low rise mini for so long now and this one fits perfectly. I decided to style this how so many mini skirts outfits were styled and that is with a cropped button up and knee high boots. I wore a cropped button up that I actually cropped today. It is a black button up that was sitting in the office side of my wardrobe that I didn't really purge because I'm always thinking like, oh, like what if I need it? But I never wore it, so I just decided let's chop it and put it to use. And then I wore my vintage knee-high boots that are actually subtly patchwork. It's very muted tones of brown and red, but I think it adds a fun twist to the outfit. And on top of that, I threw on the Portland leather tote bag. I feel like if 
the people of New York Fashion Week were not carrying a designer bag. They were carrying a very functional tote bag. So I think that this just completes the look and it's so functional yet so trendy. A great one. The black pleated skirt, another kind of mini skirt I've been looking to add to my closet for quite some time and I'm so glad I finally found one that fits. Now, I styled this skirt two ways, so let's go over them. The first way should have been a look according to who, what, where, because it had so many trendy style components. It was only contrasting white and black. I paired a white button up and made it undone by only buttoning the top button. I wore a little studded belt, Mary Janes, and white socks. But this outfit just wasn't giving for me. It felt pretty boring. It felt pretty basic, almost like a uniform. And I don't know if it's because my button up didn't have much movement, but I didn't really want to crop that button up because I actually wear that white button up. I just wasn't loving the look. So I decided to change routes because I really loved this skirt and I want to style it. So I paired it with the sheer button up that we found at the bins. This funky velvet sheer button up with the skirt and I also actually styled it in somewhat of an undone style. I buttoned up about three or four of the buttons tucked in half and then left the other half out, paired it with a pop of color bag, the orange bag I thrifted not too long ago, and then I swapped out the Mary Janes for some loafers. So it still has so many trendy components, but it feels very much more me. It feels more fun, more energetic, and just, it's a look. I like this. I feel confident in it. And I think it just kind of goes to show that you don't have to follow trends exactly by the books because it might just turn out basic for you and not feel like something you're comfortable in. So I love the funky button up look. It's a, it's a winner. It's a winner, but the other one, not so much. This romper is exactly what I was looking for when it came to a bold floral print. The crazy thing is I actually had a floral romper outfit on my vision board, it was a floral romper paired with knee-high boots. So I decided to use this outfit as a template to create my own version. I had black knee-high boots with the romper and then I also opted to add some polka dot tights because there was a subtle polka dot trend seen at New York Fashion Week, but just wasn't a dominant trend. And I think that the tights will make it a little bit more transitional as we go into cooler months. I added a pop of color with the orange bag that I thrifted not too long ago. And I just think this outfit is perfect. It is so chic yet so funky and I just am obsessed with it. I also think you could make it a little bit more transitional by adding one of the leather jackets that we thrifted yesterday. So I opted to add the shorter black jacket because I feel like it's still highlights the outfit as a whole without kind of overtaking it like a trench would and it's just so cute it's so perfect so chic and so fun ah i'm obsessed the cream waistcoat quiet luxury definitely still reigned supreme in the new york fashion week street styles and lucky for me i had just thrifted for the quiet luxury aesthetic so i paired this piece with a black column maxi skirt and black leather coach bag that I thrifted for the quiet luxury look. Now I did opt for a bit of a trendier shoe moment with Mary Jane's and white socks. I could easily make this look more timeless by just swapping out the shoes for a classic heel or loafer, but I like this combination of sleek, elegant, and a little bit trendy. It feels very on brand for the New York Fashion Week look. And I'm so glad I found a waistcoat because it was one of the only items that was on my quiet luxury vision board that I did not find in that trip. The red belt, this is the perfect pop of color piece and exactly what I was looking for. I paired this with a black plunge neck dress and black knee high boots. This outfit had so many components of New York Fashion Week street style. The plunge neckline, knee high boots, monochromatic but pop of color. I just love this outfit. It is so chic yet really simple. I already had a black dress. I already had black boots. Those are pretty closet staple pieces yet it's made trendy with one small accessory. So when I maybe don't feel like 
I love red as much anymore or maybe red is not as trendy, I can just tuck this away super easily and pull this out in a few seasons when I'm feeling it again. So I love that about the pop of color trick. This outfit is also so easily carried into cooler months by just adding a leather jacket and it continues on with that mainly monochromatic look. I think the black leather trench that we found at the bins yesterday looks super chic with this whole look. I also thought about it and after trying it on, I feel like you could potentially swap out the belt on the trench coat with a belt like this to get the pop of color on the outside if it's really chilly and you want to keep the trench closed. So a super fun outfit. I love this. It's so simple, so chic. The cargo capri pants. Now, there were a lot of relatively casual outfits featured in the New York Fashion Week street style looks, and they all had some main components consisting of a cropped tee or tank, relaxed fit low rise bottoms, socks in a comfy shoe like a sneaker, and then a loose upper layer like a button up shirt, blazer, or jacket. So I recreated that exact look with these cargo capris. I paired them with a white baby tee, some ruffle socks and sneakers, and then the brown leather jacket that we thrifted yesterday at the bins. And to top it off, the Portland leather tote that we also thrifted yesterday. And it's a look. A lot of the more casual outfits had an even more casual bag, almost like a Trader Joe's grocery bag. But they were featured a lot, so I have to assume that they were actually going to these events. But I do kind of wonder, just a little, if they were just regular humans out and about doing their daily life and they got caught up in the commotion of the camera people and now they're being used as inspo but I'm here for it. This is a cute look to just wear running errands. It's honestly something I just see myself wearing when I go and shop at Trader Joe's or whatever. Comfy, easy going, super functional. Now of course I had to try on the Jessica McClintock Gunna Sachs two-piece set, and unfortunately it's too big. I was hoping I could just wear the top with like a black skirt, platform heels for a very Lizzie McGuire moment, but it doesn't fit. And I honestly mainly just got the skirt because it felt criminal to have found the two-piece set and not get both pieces. So I'm gonna sell them together. I did notice that the skirt does have some fl small flaws but if somebody is looking to rework some pieces, that fabric will come in super handy. I'm not gonna sell it for much. Um, I know some of the 70s gun and sacks can go for like $500, but this will probably go for like 25 or 30. I, I just want somebody to enjoy it. It's super cute with the little sequins on the bottom. And that concludes thrifting for New York Fashion Week street style. I had so much fun finding these items and putting together these looks. I hope you guys enjoyed too. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like this video as well as subscribe to my channel. I can't wait to be back here with more thrifty content soon. Bye.